That's Harry. That's Bobby. Y'all knew that. <clears throat> Everybody ready? Ladies and gentlemen, this is a happy day for South Carolina. Today I'm announcing that I've selected longtime South Carolina business executive Harry M. Lightsey III to serve as the next secretary of the South Carolina Department of Commerce. He will exceed, succeed the one and only Bobby Hitt, whose imprint on our state's economy and progress has been immeasurable and who has solidified Team South Carolina's global brand for automotive, aerospace, and tire manufacturing and their international export, to name a few. During Mr. Hitt's almost 11-year tenure, South Carolina has announced 1,141 wonderful projects, bringing with them 129,373 new good-paying jobs for our people and careers, and also that represents $35.8 billion in capital investment. We remain the nation's largest exporter of passenger vehicles, tires, and ball bearings, and these are certainly some big shoes to fill. We have had excellent progress with our Secretaries of Commerce and the Commerce Department for years, and now we are, as you know, since we did not shut down during the virus, but slowed down, we are ready to blast off while a lot of our competitors are still digging out. Harry Lightsey has been a fixture in South Carolina's business community for many years, and I am confident that as our next Secretary of Commerce, he will keep South Carolina winning. Our state has the people, the workforce, the infrastructure, the intellectual capital, the environmental assets, and the quality of life necessary to compete both nationally and globally for jobs and investment, ensuring the prosperity, happiness, and freedom of future generations of South Carolinians. Our trajectory has been upwards for years, and we are ta have taken steps during Secretary Hitt's tenure, and we are prepared to take more now. Harry Lightsey served in top executive leadership roles for major corporations in South Carolina and across the nation. Notably, he served as president of Bell South Telecommunications for South Carolina prior to their merger with AT&T and afterwards became president for AT&T's Southeast region. Following his 26 years in the telecommunications industry, which involved enormous innovative progress, Mr. Lightsey joined the General Motors Corporation where he directed the legacy automakers' federal government affairs operation as well as their emerging technologies such as OnStar and infotainment divisions. He currently serves as a principal with Hawksbill Advisors and has served as a member of the board of directors of the Federal Reserve Bank in Richmond, Virginia. Fluent in Japanese, Mr. Lightsey is a 1978 graduate of Princeton University with a major in East Asian Studies. He received his law degree in 1981 from the University of South Carolina School of Law. Mr. Lightsey, at a youthful 65 years, is a native of Columbia, is married to Mercy, and they have two fine children. Mr. Lightsey. Thank you very much, Governor. It would certainly be my distinct honor and privilege to have the opportunity to serve as South Carolina's, uh, in the cabinet of South Carolina's Secretary of Commerce. Uh, Governor, you have established an enviable record and shown a willingness to try new ways to create opportunities. I would also like to recognize the efforts of Secretary of Commerce Bobby Hitt. Secretary Hitt, has served our state well during his record-breaking 10-year time in the position. And he has created a team that is at the top of the stack in economic development. Like Governor McMaster, 
I have a deep and profound love for my state of South Carolina, from its natural beauty to its industrious people. My family comes from the upstate to the PD to the low country. As the state president of Bell South, which you've already heard about, I travel the roads of our state from one end to the other. Each area of our state brings its own individual set of assets that we can leverage to bring prosperity to our citizens. I've spent my entire career being part of businesses that have shaped our modern lifestyle. My career in telecommunications spanned the dawn of wireless communications and the internet. My time in automobile manufacturing has seen the beginning of a technological shift that leaders like Mary Barra, who was the CEO of General Motors, have described as unparalleled since the days of Henry Ford. In addition to bringing new businesses into our state, I believe that we have a role to play in helping our established businesses thrive and transform as necessary. As the governor has said, South Carolina needs an educated, trained, and skilled workforce so that we can compete nationally and globally for roles, for jobs, and economic development uh, investment. Our, wor our workers will need to develop new skills to adjust to ever-changing technological advances. I'm excited about the opportunities to usher in a new era that enhances the quality of life for all South Carolinians. The next five to 10 years will bring incredible opportunities to establish manufacturing businesses as they are transformed to adapt to new markets and technologies. The pandemic has demonstrated the need to bring pharmaceutical, medical, and biotech manufacturing back to the United States and to South Carolina. The pandemic also demonstrated how quickly and easily disruptions can occur to our food supply chain. Our state's agribusiness sector is well positioned to take advantage of new opportunities created to adjust to our new reality. And our state's hospitality and tourism sector has an unlimited potential in every region, uh, uh, unlimited potential uh, in every region of the state. I truly believe that South Carolina is uniquely positioned to capitalize on these opportunities and bring economic growth across the state. Finally, I'd like to mention that transparency and accountability through public disclosure has been a hallmark of Governor McMaster's tenure. The competition for jobs and investment is fierce, and South Carolina can compete with any state in the nation and any country on the globe. We must maintain the public's trust in how their tax dollars and our state assets are used to incentivize economic development. And we must do so without losing our state's competitive position. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carolina. Uh, you all know, of course, Bobby Hitt with a, a career in journalism and then a fabulous career in time with BMW. And now with almost 11 years, by the time he leaves, it'll be 11, close to 11 years as Secretary of Commerce uh, this man has performed extraordinary service for his state and people. I know of no other state that has had uh, such success through their Commerce Department as we have under the leadership of this man, Bobby Hitt. Uh, he's respected by people all across the state and the country. I'm glad to see Lou Kennedy here today speaking of pharmaceutical development. She's leading the, leading the innovation in that area, and we appreciate it. But we have leaders all across our state who trust and depend on Bobby Hitt. And Bobby, I'll just say we are delighted with your service. Uh, we know you're not going far, but we appreciate your dedication to the great people of South Carolina. Thank if you. Thank you very much. Uh, this is a special day for me. Uh, it's taken a while uh, for me to get to this point. I honestly did not think uh, I would have a tenure that lasted this long. Uh, 
Uh, I laughed speaking to one of my colleagues earlier that when I first signed up the first day and they said, well, it takes five years to be vested in the uh, retirement system, I said, well, I don't think I'll make it quite that far. So, uh, but here we are 11 years later. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a remarkable ride for me going all the way back to my newspaper career. I used to look at South Carolina and look at the statistics of South Carolina, and we were a state that had a very modest middle class. We had a very small and compact middle class. And all I could think of then was I watched new industry coming into the upstate back 30 years or more ago, and gee, how do we get to build a middle class? Uh, I have had the great fortune throughout my career, then going to BMW, to sort of sit in the front seat and watch the change come to South Carolina and the growth of our middle class. And I have worked tirelessly along with the most remarkable staff you can imagine. Harry, you're, in, you're, invest, you're uh, inheriting the best. Uh, I have remarkable talent. Uh, I am by style an enabler, and we have great managers at our department. A few of them are over here today. Uh, and we basically work for South Carolina. We work with all 46 counties, we work with all of our alliances, we work with all our sister agencies, and we've constructed a thing called Team South Carolina, and it collaborates and it works. Uh, this is not easy work, it's not traditional work, uh, but it's work I know that Harry will fit into very well. Uh, he and I have known each other for several decades as well, uh, and I have pledged to him that I will stay around and help him in any way that I can at no expense to the state, uh, as long as he would like me to help. And I've had the great, great fortune to work for two really great governors, um, and uh, both uh, Governor Haley, who was a terrific inspiration to me, and uh, Henry McMaster has been a terrific boss. And together we have been able to do just amazing things. Uh, and South Carolina today, if you look at the stats, the, the uh, per capita income is up about 40% in the last 10 years. There's that middle class growth, and the state revenues are up over 100% in the last 10 years. We are steady and we're growing. It will not stop, uh, and I will do everything I can to keep it going. It's been, uh, I remember when I called my, one of my sons and I said, I'm thinking about doing this, what do you think? And he said, it'd be a hell of a good finish, Dad. So on top of what's been a great careers, a series of careers that I've had, uh, this has been a great finish. Uh, and I never anticipated being a government employee, uh, and uh, uh, I never anticipated running a government agency, uh, but I know I'm, uh, with all due respect to my friends, standing over here from the cabinet, I got, we have the best damn agency in the state and the best commerce department in the United States and we're the envy of many states. Why? Because we're a nice small state and we all know each other and we can deal with problems and we can solve problems. Uh, and I, I see some of my fellow cabinet members that I routinely engage with, uh, but it's been a great pleasure. Uh, it's been a pleasure of my life and I'm now going to go spend some time up in Fairfield County where I live uh, and after about a month's worth of sleep I might come up for air. Uh, and I might answer a question or two, but with that, I'm about done. And I thank you all, all very much, uh, my dear friends in the press. I do remember the first day I walked out with Governor Haley when she appointed me and walked out and saw the faces of the press. Most About half of them used to work for me, so it was kind of a fascinating moment. Uh, so we were both surprised, they and me, uh, and it's been a great ride. So thank you very much, and with that, Governor, thank, thank you. you for a great thank time. Thank you, Bobby. Yes, thank sir. you. Thank you. <laughs> Bobby mentioned collaboration, communication, cooperation, and that's our hallmark, that's what we do. And I, I notice also Bill Kirkland of the University of South Carolina is here. We work with the research universities of the technical colleges and that collaboration and working uh, uh, strength is something that adds to our, our success. And we're certainly going to continue and even and build on that as the innovations are taking over the world. We'd be glad to answer questions. Did I what? Did you consult with any senators? I will say that we consulted with, we got recommendations, information from senators, from House members, from business leaders all across the state who uh, were interested in seeing that the Department of Commerce continued to 
uh, thrive. And we took all that into consideration and appreciate their advice very much. But you're confident that they'll be confirmed? Highly confident. Sure. Uh, sure. There are a number of senators, some of whom will be voting on your confirmation, who have been uh, critical over the last few years of the level of transparency out of the Commerce Department. You mentioned in your, uh, in your speech there the sort of balance between transparency and competitiveness. Um, do you believe that the, the, the contours of, of incentive deals should be made public after they are reached so that the public can judge whether or not they think that they are uh, in the state's best interest? So at this point, uh, uh, just to brand new to the job, I can say that uh, I understand the governor's uh, and commitment to transparency, uh, but there is the balance, as you indicated. Uh, we need to protect the state's competitive position. We need to, to protect the competitive positions of the businesses in the state. Uh, but uh, beyond that, uh, I probably can't go right now, but uh, I will certainly look forward to, to learning as much as I can. And, uh, and you have my commitment to be as transparent as I can without uh, sacrificing the competitive interests of the, the state and its citizens. Thank you. One issue that uh, Secretary Chin has mentioned over the last few years has been uh, broadband development, rural broadband, and the issues that uh, yes. recruiting companies to rural areas has when, when that's an issue. You know, is that going to be a priority for you, and, and, and how do we improve that moving forward? Well, it's, after 26 years in, uh, in telecommunications, it's, it's certainly uh, one of those uh, uh, areas that I have some uh, interest in and, and some background in, uh, I can tell you that uh, getting uh, broadband infrastructure uh, into our state and throughout uh, the rural areas of our state should be a, a top priority of, for all of us as we go forward. And I look forward to uh, exploring the opportunities uh, to do that uh, with all of the stakeholders. If I could just ask one last, I mean, the fact that you are coming from a telecom background and tech background, there are, you know, a number of tech companies that have come to South Carolina over the last few years. Is that an industry in particular that you see as, as one that could be like for further development in South Carolina? Well, yes. I, I think I think South Carolina is well positioned for to take advantage of many of the technological advances that are being occurring in a number of different industries, from the, the automobile manufacturing industry that I referenced to the telecommunications, uh, the wireless telecommunications that is about to deploy. Uh, their next uh, generation uh, 5G of wireless, uh, and that will enable uh, all kinds of uh, new technologies uh, that we don't even can't even imagine at, at this point in time. Uh, pharmaceuticals, biotech, uh, I think are are poised to uh, take off, and, and I look forward to uh, being able to to bring all of those uh, uh, opportunities to the state uh, as we go forward over the next few years. What I'd like to do is uh, listen uh, to all of the stakeholders um, and get out uh, it through the state. Uh, uh, Governor McMaster mentioned, uh, and I think that this has been a hallmark of uh, South Carolina, is we're a state who has a reputation for being able to work together to get the job done. And uh, I look forward to, to getting around the state, meeting with leaders in, in higher education and in education generally to uh, meet with uh, business, the business leadership uh, and the legislative leadership and to, to hear what their interests are and hear what they think our opportunities are and then to work with them uh, to bring those to bear. Right, but specifically, are there any policies or any, any actions that you would take on day one that you feel either haven't been addressed or you'd like to, like I said, keep going, that you've seen Secretary Hitt's been able to, to hand you this? Well, so Secretary Hitt, uh, as, as referenced by both the governor and, and Secretary Hitt, has had a tremendous uh, success uh, over his time in office. And uh, his, his department is at the top of the stack uh, in, the, in the nation. And at this point in time, I would say what we need to do is just kind of keep on keeping on and take advantage of the tremendous momentum we have and what his leadership and the governor's leadership has brought and uh, to keep working from that and when and then as uh, we go forward and recognize that there are things that uh, need to be fine-tuned changed uh, take advantage of those opportunities as we learn more about them any more questions one more uh, so before you leave uh, 
course, one of the big stories that's happened over the last few months is that people who run restaurants and service industry jobs say they can't get people to come back. As Commerce Secretary, the service industry is one of our big industries here in South Carolina. How would you address that? Because a lot of things, a lot of times people are saying, the owners are saying, hey, it's because people are on employment, but people who are working are saying, hey, we just need to get better jobs. What's the answer to that? What's the middle ground that you would address? Well, what I, what I would do is uh, propose to listen uh, once again to, to people both in that industry and workers and see what, uh, what needs to be done uh, and then talk with the leadership uh, and, and find out what the opportunities are. But at this point, I don't, I don't know of any specific policies that I would say we need to do this or that. I think what we need to do is, is study the issue and, and figure out what the right things are to do. I'm 71 years old. Be 72 before the end of the year. No, I'm fine. Um, on, the, on the matter of, of people coming back to work, in, especially in the hospitality industry, you might see my friend Dwayne Parrish over there, and we've talked about this quite a bit. Um, this is unfortunately, the market will help us solve this problem, but sometimes the market doesn't move as swiftly as we would like it to. It, it grinds a little slowly. Uh, there are people out who can come back to work in some hospitality jobs, but may be looking at something else. We also have people that are taking care of children or taking care of loved ones. Lives have changed throughout the uh, uh, pandemic, and people have other obligations. And so it's going to take a little while. It's frustrating. Uh, it's frustrating for people in the construction industry. It's frustrating for people in the hospitality industry. But it will get worked out, and we'll do the best we can. Uh, and I think uh, through DEW, PRT, Commerce, we all associate with each other as to how we can best help. There's just no magic, there's no silver bullet here, there's no magic to it. It's, it's just hard work and we have to get people have a time to sort out their lives and make their own decisions. After all, that's what we're about, creating choices for people where they can work and where they can live and how they raise their families. That's the whole essence of what all of us do here in state government. And it'll get worked out. It just won't get worked out as fast as we would all like. Plague took a year. It's going to probably take a year to undo it all before we're back to where we would like to be. Uh, hopefully, it'll be faster than that, but you just don't know. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Any more questions? Thank you very much.